Well, hi, everybody. Nice to see you today. Thank you for joining me. Turn that on just a little bit. I've got a little bit of a sun problem. That's, I'm hoping won't cause too much of a problem with video. So let's I'm trying to block some of it off. I believe it's just a little too high. So try and, nope, wrong way. There we go. We'll kind of go off just a little bit. All right. So today I'm going to be doing another journal, but I wanted to just show how easy it was to use what you have. You don't have to buy other stuff. You don't have to, and that's the reason they call it a junk journal because you use junk. Like today I'm going to use a, a cracker box. Okay. Um, I love these crackers, so you'll see me do a lot of journals out of these. But uh, but also to use, you know, leftovers and things like that. Like the pieces I cut out from the box. You know, the tabs on top, this type of thing. You know, now some of them I probably won't use, but like these I might use for tabs. There's four of them. I can put four signatures in here. That spine is pretty is pretty wide. Let me see if I can find my ruler right off hand. Can I put it up? No, it is hiding. There it is. Alrighty. Yeah, the spine is uh, about two and three quarters. So, well, a little bit less, probably two and five eighths. Yeah, about two and five eighths. So, I mean, that's a pretty good size. Look how wide that is. And you don't have to make it this big. You can cut it down, which is what I normally do because, you know, I don't, I don't need anything that super big. Um, but it's to your preference, whatever way you want. You know, like this one, there's another cracker box. I cut this down because I wanted um, a skinny, a tall skinny journal. I've got a purpose for this one, even though it's really, really fat right here on the spine. That's about how wide it's going to be, you know, with the signatures in there. And I may, this may be a little too tall for me. I may cut it down a little bit, but not by much. Because, like I said, I've got a reason for this one. So I've got this one set aside. So I trimmed down a box earlier and, you know, I love my jelly plate. I've got jelly plate papers up the wazoo. Okay. They're everywhere. So I went through and after I made three junk journals, which is in another video, and I used up a bunch of papers in that and I had a bunch more. So I made four more signatures using, you know, just my jelly plate papers. And this is on really heavy cardstock. Now these are four, one, two, three, four pages in this signature, but they're so thick, you know, I don't want too many. And there's between four and five in each of these. But I haven't added anything else. I haven't added any book pages. I haven't, you know, done anything along those lines, which is, yeah. So I took one of my jelly print papers and uh, cut it up and trimmed it. I glued it. Now I will tell you this, okay? I didn't want to use double stick tape, but I didn't feel like getting out any of the other, um, what do you call it? We're getting a good sunspot here. I may have to pause this and come back when the sun has changed directions in the sky or positions. But uh, yeah, I just I wanted to use up some of my jelly plates. That's what the pages. That's what I made them for. So I've been using those. That's the inside. I haven't done anything to the inside yet. But I'm thinking I'd like to use some. Uh, tissue paper on the inside 
because I've got like a whole drawer full of tissue papers that are really cute here and there, you know. Um, and I just, half the time, I don't know what to do with them other than collage with them. Let me see, I've got, well, that's not tissue paper. Those are papers. All right. So I've got, you know, some baby blue, some white. Ooh, that green would probably work because that would match the dragonflies. I've got some flowers, I've got sprinkles, I've got gold, pink and white striped. This one is really pretty and I don't remember where I got it from. So I'm kind of hoarding that one. I just, I don't know what I want to do with it yet. I have an idea, but let's see. There's some more white, red, Christmas. And this is all stuffed in one drawer. I'm thinking I'm going to do a giveaway and uh, here's some really pretty vintage uh, wrapping paper, tissue paper rather. I've got papers with tissue paper with clocks. <laughs> so I mean, I'm going to do a giveaway. Uh, right now in our Facebook group which is Coffee Cup Crafts and Conversation. The link is down below in the description. That's the word. Uh, but uh, we're doing um, an event called Clutterbox to the Rescue. And um, somebody who gets mine is probably going to get a good chunk of really nice, you know, tissue paper. Like these are napkins. Those don't even go in there. Now I've got a bunch of white because if I see it, like I got this at the, thrift, at the Goodwill, this whole package, there's like, there's 18 sheets, but it's 520 square inches, 20 inch by 26 inches wide. I got it for 50 cents. <laughs> so I could probably stop getting some white tissue paper from now on, but uh, it does make really nice texture on mixed media projects on canvas things like that. I just haven't done any canvases lately, which I could probably, I've seen how that feels like um, parchment paper, but yeah, and I'm not even done. There's some more Christmas. Okay, I believe that's done. So, but yeah, I've got so much tissue paper. Now, oh, there's some really hot pink. It looks red in the uh, in the camera frame, but it's not. It's like a dark pink. I mean, I don't know if you can see the difference because here's red. There you go. And it's not it's not as faded as it looks. It's it's a darker. It's a more vibrant dark pink. But I mean, as opposed to like you know that pale pink. So, on that note, now some people probably have a whole lot more tissue paper than I do. Honestly, this is probably all I got room for, and I'm barely, you know, I'm bursting at the seams with what I got. So, we're going to set that aside. Uh-oh. craft a lunch craft a lunch there's some more really delicate tissue paper. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use some tissue paper on the inside. This may not be enough. Or just enough. There we go. Check that out. That's pretty daggum cool. But I'm not just going to lay it in one flap. I'm going to I'm going to collage it. Okay. All right. Now with this, I am going to get out the Mod Podge. Now, I make my own. 
some people use two part glue, one part water. I use half and half. So, uh, let me get out my little cup. You can get a set of four of these little glass dishes at the Dollar Tree for a buck. And they're perfect to put your Mod Podge in um, if you're doing, I don't know, it's just, it's I love them. They're perfect for a lot of things. But yeah, I make my own. I buy the gallon of Elmer's glue at Menards or Lowe's. And uh, I make my own. I bought a gallon of glue probably two years ago. And I still have pro almost half of it left. Oops. So. Oh, I don't. I did it again. I do not know why I did that. Dag nabbit. Okay. So we're going. To put some pages on. And even though it looks almost see-through when it dries, it'll come back out. I should probably put something under there. And I've always found to minimize your air bubbles when you lay down anything for collage. You start from the middle and go out. That's kind of, you know, common sense. But some people, like for me, I'm such a moron half the time that uh, common sense doesn't come until after I've already screwed up. And then I'm like, oh, duh. But that's me. And if you, you know, for me, let me see. Maybe I'll throw in a couple different colors in here instead of just all green. Since this is, it's got some yellow in it. Let me see. I'll probably throw some gold in here. Give it a little bit of... you know, dimension or something, but I'll do that on the top layer. I'm not going to do it on the bottom because then I don't want it to disappear. And if this wrinkles, I don't care. You know, that's the whole point about tissue paper. It's all... Uh-oh. That's something foreign in the water. Ah. Now wrinkles are good, air bubbles are not, because air bubbles will tend to, um, uh, you know, when they dry out, they'll tend to split, and then you'll have, you won't have complete coverage. So, so we're going to put that one. 
right there. I'm putting a little extra on the spine only to help reinforce some of it. I mean, tissue paper is obviously not going to do a whole lot, but uh, any little bit helps. Even when it dries after the Mod Podge, you know, dries with the Mod Podge, it still gives it a little bit more strength. And it, this is a pretty good stiff cardboard, so it's not like I'm worried about, you know, my signatures falling out or anything like that. I always forget when I do this sometimes to flip it over and make sure I've got the edges glued down. See, like that. Let's see. Alrighty. That was a big piece. I probably could have cut that one down. But I didn't. And that's okay. The edges that are hanging over, I'm flipping back onto itself. And some of it, yeah, it'll have to be trimmed and cut. You know the drill. But for the most part, it helps a little bit with coverage. Okay, and some, it won't. Get that air bubble out that I saw. I have a couple more pieces of green I'll use just to use it up. Mm. Let's see, I'm trying to figure out where I should put it. I'll put it right across the bottom. There we go. Tear up some of this gold and just put smaller pieces, you know, on some of the blanks. blanks per se, but some of the thinner spots that aren't as thick as the others. I don't want that straight edge. a little big for me.
pretty good. Not so much. Alrighty. And if I want to add more, I can add more. inside so we can still use the pieces and then only the rough edges show on the outside. I can do that. Well, the only thing that I feel is the drawback to um, using Mod Podge is that um, it's really hard for it to not stay sticky um, even after it dries. I don't know if you've ever noticed if you've Mod Podged a couple pages in a row and then you've closed them up and hadn't opened them in a while when you go to open them again they're, they're stuck together and that's one thing I don't like about Mod Podge Oh, but, okay, so I'm going to pause this for a minute. I'm going to clean this mess up a little bit, and I'm going to use my heat gun and dry this. That way you guys aren't sitting here waiting for me to get that done. I'll be right back. One thing I wanted to bring up, um, I trimmed it off, you know, the excess. Uh, but when you use Mod Podge, it tends, even cardboard, it tends to want to curl it, okay? But, as you can see, Originally, before I stopped the video, it was a lot more curled. As it dries, um, it will lay flatter. And if you have a problem, you can always block it, you know, by putting some wax paper down and, and some heavy books or something like that. Drive your car over it if you want. I don't know. But, um, okay, so I've got probably about a minute left to dry, and then I'll be right back. Okay. Now, it's mostly dry, surface-wise it is, okay? Um, you can feel that the cardboard is still a little damp, all right? But it's straightened out for the most part, you know? <sighs> now, I'm going to flip this over. Um, I like this, but this is a little plain for me. And I'm not real big, if you've noticed on a lot of my journals, I'm not real big with a bunch of stuff on the outside. Because honestly, if you put your journal in your bookcase, it's going to fall off, it's going to get knocked off, it's going to get ripped off, it's going to chip off, it, you know. So I kind of just leave it um, not completely plain, but it's not super embellished. But that's just my preference. You know, um, I believe that most everybody's journals, when they do do that, are absolutely gorgeous. Me, I'm always afraid my brain and my, I'm just not that talented to be able to get away with something like that. And this isn't really, I mean, obviously you can see this isn't, it's not going to cover it up, but it just gives it a little bit more of a, I don't know. Just something, something. I like dragonflies. And this was actually the piece I used to make these, the, this jelly plate was um, uh, one of my friends had, uh, they had one of those um, scan and cuts, I believe, and she just scanned and cut a whole bunch of things and she sent me the negatives, which is like a stencil on cardstock, which I thought was fabulous and I loved using those on uh, uh, my jelly plate. Now, obviously, they don't last 
you know, like they would a regular stencil, but, um, you know, you can get some really beautiful pictures out of them. And then you're able to even just use, use it. Oh, pardon me. Um, use it. The stencil part itself you can use in projects. So. Now you see I'm not, you know, I'm not gluing the whole entire thing down. I'm just doing it in spots. Obviously, I didn't do a very good job there. There. Because I might want to tuck something in there. I don't know. But I am putting the glue along the fold. Oops. I'm using the glue to, in case, I'm using the tip of the glue gun in case the glue dried faster than I could get the lace down. That way it will loosen the glue and I don't have to run another bead. There. Okay, and then I'm going to do it on this side. This side. I'm going to need another glue stick, so let me grab one. I'm going to put this on here first. I could probably get away with just not, you know, putting so much or putting it all down at once and just a little bit at a time. But for, you know, time si time sake and video sake, I will And yes, I have a little spatula to help me with my glue and my hot glue. I just, to me, it was just quicker to do it this way. Sometimes I use this, sometimes I don't. A lot of times you'll just hear me cussing and going, ow, 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 because I burnt myself, which I do quite frequently. A little piece that's sticking up right there. All righty. So... Let me trim this. I don't use the same scissors I use um, for paper that I do for fabric or cloth or uh, lace or anything like that. I use a different pair of scissors because paper, I believe next to rocks, are about... Um, one of the worst things you can put, you can use on scissors. The quickest way to dull them is by cutting paper. So I have a pair of paper scissors, and then when I when those get really, really dull, I dele delegate those to cutting cardboard. And uh, then I also have a pair of, uh, well, I have two different pairs of fabric scissors, so... Oops, caught a piece there, didn't mean to do that. All right, now here, I'm just gonna lay that down. Same with right here. Not a lot, just a little. All righty, now, you see that? I'm 
and then there's your inside. I'm not done with the inside, but most of the times I just, honestly, I'll put a pocket in it and not many people pay attention to the insides anyway. Alrighty, and here are my four signatures, but I'm going to decorate those on the next video. I'm not going to do a two hour long video. I think sometimes it's just too much. So, but um, the next time I will, we will decorate the pieces, whoops, that we cut off the end. We've got tabs that I can put you know, on, on those, there's the other one, four signatures, four tabs, that'll work, decorate those, but I want to show you what I did with, um, the cutouts or the cutoffs, whatever you call it, um, for the other box I did. Just to give you an idea. Alright, so I covered one side, in fact, this side with paper, this side with some tissue paper, and I also had an extra piece that I made onto it and made into a pocket. But I cut, if you can see that, let's see if I can get really close. Okay, well, I, I cut the tissue paper and then the top bottom part and the top part so that they would match without a breakup. I thought that was kind of cool. And then I poked a hole, obviously, and just tucked some things in there. That's just some of the scraps I've been using in the other journals, nothing specific. And then this one um, I thought would make a really nice bookmark. I used what was left over of this stuff laid it on the back and then took some more left over this you know I'm using scraps that's all I'm doing um, put it and then I inked the edges on both sides and poked a hole and then this one uh, let me see if I can get it nope it's not there oh I put it in okay I'll have to get it out this one um, I made to match Ah, oh, this that I did on another one. I started working on this one already. Um, it was in one of my videos. A 20 minute gifts. Um, it's a calendar. But um, I made this so I got to put this in there before I mail the box because I put it in as a gift. Um, I got to finish this one up. But uh, yeah, you can use these, cut them, use them as pockets, even if you. Okay, for example, that part right there, you know, when you open up your box of crackers and it wants to, you know, you have a place to tuck the tab in to close them, use that as a tuck spot on your journal. You know, you put it in there and that way you take this out. Instead of a pocket, you've got an automatic tuck spot. See how that works? Isn't that cool? And put this back together. Now obviously these are matching for the one journal I'm doing. And um, this will be for my Doctor Who journal. Minus the pink stripes. But like I said, I just put it in there to get it out of the way. But yeah, so the next journal will work on um, some of these. And uh, maybe I'll come up with something else cool to add to it. Might dig out some clusters or make some more that'll match. But uh, on that note, I'm going to let you go for now. Um, I'm going to do my spiel in case I stop it and do a part two, but I may just pause this and um, just pick it back up. No, I think I'll do it a part one and a part two. But uh, yeah, so um, if you like my video, give me a thumbs up. Please share. Okay. I'm working on getting my subscribers build up. Uh, 
I was going really strong for a while and then things just started going really bad in our family. I mean, it was crazy. Uh, um, we had a lot of deaths last year and we've already had one this year and it's only February. So, I mean, that's five deaths in the last year in my family. And um, it put me down. It put me down last at the end of last year. It wasn't until the beginning of this month or the end of January, beginning of February of this year, where I was able to, um, you know, get my, get my brain back, so to speak, and start videotaping again. And I believe I lost, I lost some subscribers for that, but that's okay. You know, I understand. I wouldn't want to be subscribed to a channel that I never watch or a channel that never posts anything. And it was a couple months before, between videos and that was kind of hard, but, uh, yeah. So if you, if you want, give me a share. You can share me on Pinterest. You can share me on Blogspot, Google Plus, um, Twitter, Instagram. I don't have a Twitter or an Instagram account, but, um, Facebook. I do have a LinkedIn account, but um, I haven't used it in a while. But yeah, and Gmail. I guess that's the Google Plus. But yeah, so if you want, you know, that'd be great. I'm going to start doing some uh, giveaways. And for every share you do, you'll get an extra entry into the giveaway. Um, I haven't worked out all the details or anything like that yet, but I'm, I am going to start on these shorter videos, you know, like the 20 minute crafts or the ones that are under an hour. I know that, um, are the ones I'll do the giveaways on most of them anyway, but yeah, so share, share, share. And then when you do link it in the bottom and let me know that you shared and, uh, I'll put you in, in a running for a giveaway. In fact, I'll do a giveaway for this video. Yes, I will. I feel like doing a giveaway for this video. Um, there'll be some clusters, some embellishments, some tissue papers, probably napkins. Um, I don't know. I'll just throw a bunch of stuff in together. And, and uh, the more you share and the more you link me the the share in the description below, um, the more chances you'll get to go into the giveaway and the more up to increase your odds for winning. So on that note, I'm going to go have a great day and I will see you in part two. Bye.